I'm capable of caring for my 13 year old. When I had a conversation with her and I said, am I a substantial danger to my children? And she didn't want to answer. I'm like, you need to answer yes or no. Am I a substantial danger? And she said, no. I go, then why am I not back with my daughter? is the secret how to fight cps and win brian we're going to take one more call here from uh is it valencia in las vegas oh hi it's it's um marlena oh are you there yes i'm here how can we help you did you have a story to tell or a question to ask um both um i've been working with um cps since it's gonna, it's gonna be 19 months already. Um, they took my my kids when I had my son at, I was six months pregnant when I had him due to preeclampsia. And um, the children were taken because of domestic violence. And um, like 19 months later, I'm the one that has been seeing my son in the hospital because he was in Fresno and then now he's in Orange County. And, um, I've been providing everything, like everything. I'm homeless. I'm still homeless because I got stuck in Fresno from Orange County um, during the pandemic because I had them in March, and that's when the pandemic started. And this whole time, I've been asking them, what about housing? I need help with housing. I need help with housing. And they barely decided to um, refer me to Section 8 around um, September 20th, around there. And then this court date, they terminated my services. And I wasn't there for the court date because I was, I'd been in the hospital, but I was called and told that um, there was going to be another court date November 23rd. Well, I didn't receive the paperwork until November 3rd, and a lot of things on there are really bad. I mean, they, want to get my, they don't want my son to come home to me. I don't even have a home to live in. My daughter has been placed with my grandparents, and all I've been asking is to move back in with my parents because I need to be, I, I'm tired of being homeless and them not helping me. It, it was really, it's been a struggle. Well, where, so, where are your children right now? One's with your grandmother and the other one is where? In Orange County in the hospital. He's been in the hospital because he has a, um, a ventilator. And in this county that I'm at, there is no pulmonary doctors. So I assigned, I, I sent him there. I chose the hospital he's in which is Halfridge and I mean, he's been doing great like he's been doing really well there I go see him but lately I haven't been able to see him because I was really sick from September to now and it's just it, I don't know what to do like she doesn't even think I'm capable of caring for my 13 year old when I had a conversation with her and I said am I a substantial danger to my children and she didn't want to answer and I'm like you need to answer yes or no am I a substantial danger and she said no I go, then why am I not back with my daughter? Like, why, why are you keeping me from her? Like, I just want to move back to my parents. I'm still homeless. You guys are not helping me find housing. And you guys never even gave me a gas car to go see my son. I've been doing all this on my own. And you guys are keeping my, you're trying to keep my son. Have you spoken to your attorney about this? Yes, my attorney sucks. And I don't know if I can fire him because it's already like at the end, at 18 months, like permanent placement. They want to adopt my son out. And I've been talking to my lawyer and I've been telling him what she's saying. And I'm like, why can't you follow 388? I need to be back with my pet. I, I need to be back home. Like, why am I going through all this? Are you, and, is your case in California? Yes. Okay. So it's, do you have a court appointed or a private attorney? A court appointed. Okay, so what you need to do is email your court-appointed attorney uh, information that would allow that attorney to file what's called the 388 petition. Have you lost your family reunification services, or is this what's going to happen at the next hearing if you don't do anything? Um, okay, I'm, I'm in family reunification right now. 
Okay, so they're going to terminate your family unification services and then yeah. subsequently try to terminate your parental rights. But what you need to yeah. do, what you need to do is try to win this case. You need to try to win this trial that's coming up or this hearing. And the only way that you can do that is to work with your court appointed attorney or get another court appointed attorney. On my YouTube Can I fire can I fire this attorney? Because well, I've I've given him everything that I needed and he's he's not like he didn't even like call me because I told him please call me as soon as you get the report because I had called him when I spoke to the social worker and that's when she told me that Asher's not going to come home to me and that she doesn't feel I'm a substantial a substantial danger to my kids but it doesn't matter because they need to my they don't think I can meet their needs mm -hmm. and I just on, a my lawyer, just on a technicality that substantial danger test is used at the disposition hearing, not at subsequent six-month review hearings. They use a little bit of a different uh, test. Um, that's kind of a technicality, but it's an important distinction that you and your lawyer should talk about. And if you've completed all of your plans, you need to make sure that at the next hearing, all your service providers are present and that um, you know they're able to testify that you've done everything that you're supposed to do, that you've learned from it, and you've been benefited from it. One of the things that's going to be hard is I'm not sure a judge is going to send you back the children if you don't have a home. So if your parents are willing to allow you to live in their home with the children, that's something that you and your attorney should let the social worker know as soon as possible. Yeah, and they know. They know. They they had another TDM meeting for me back in September. And, um, yeah, they know that my parents have said, like, we would like for her to come home. Because in December, December I was taking care of them. We all had COVID. And I, I've been, like, my mom just had a stroke. So I've been trying to get back into my mom's house so I could help. But my work, the worker was refusing. And my um, my lawyer, I told him to follow me. Like, why can't you follow 38? Like, Leah's 13 years old already. Like, she she keeps telling my worker, like, when is my mom coming home? When do I get to go back with my mom? And she tells her she's not ready. She's not ready yet. She's just not ready yet. So, I mean, the social worker can say anything they want. You have a right to contest it by way of a six-month review hearing that apparently is coming up or by way of a three- It's 18 months. Okay. Well, this is 18, 18 months. Yeah, but every six months they have a review. So you're at the 18-month yeah. date. Um, the social uh -huh. worker has to prove certain things. If you've done everything, you need to bring all your providers into court or, and have them testify so that uh, the, the social worker who just makes recommendations, you know, can be shown that he or she is not accurate in front of the judge. The judge is the one that makes the ultimate decisions. Okay. Right, not the social worker. So try to okay. work with your attorney. If you can't, go on YouTube, and I, I have a video on how to change court-appointed attorneys. In California, it's called a Marsden hearing. But it's, you know, it's not necessarily automatic. You have to have some evidence, some real reasons why. Okay, so you want to watch that video and make sure you comply. Because, you know, I see a lot of people make Marsden hearings on their court-appointed attorney, and it doesn't work. Because a lot of people think, oh, if I file for a Marsden hearing, I'll automatically get a new court-appointed attorney. And that's not the law in California. You follow okay. me? You follow me? Yeah. Okay. I am. I am following you. All right. Listen. Yeah, I'm just... Hold on a second. Okay, go on. Okay. I want to thank you for listening and thank you for calling in. If you have any further questions, give me a call at my office, 888 and I'll talk to you some more about your case. All right? Thank you. Thank and, you so much. Thank call, you. Call us in a few weeks and let us know. Give us an update. All right? All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Brian, we've come to the end of the show. Anything you want to mention in the next 60 seconds? Um. If you need a, if you're in the California area, anywhere in the California area, please feel free to reach out. Um, and if you need a therapist, um, my number is 951-289-0478. Um, you can also find me on Psychology Today, um, or you can re you can look me up on the uh, Life Source Affordable Counseling website. Cool. Give us your number and your email again one more time. Okay, sure. It's uh, 951-289. 0478. Um, my email is brian.scott.hamilton.42 at gmail.com. Very good. 